Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you today from Waikiki Beach, right above the altar at St. Augustine's Catholic Church. And looking out my window, I see perfect corduroy to the horizon, head high surf. The last two or three days we had uh, what they call surf warning, high surf advisory warning levels where it's double overhead and bigger. My son Jeremiah just moved back to Hawaii. He works with FEMA and he has a permanent place here now. So he's been quarantined for a couple of weeks. This is in the middle of the summer that we're, that we're recording this. And uh, now uh, he and I got to go out and do some, some real cool surfing with my, with my wife, Cindy. So we're glad to be uh, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. And if you're a Catholic, if you're a Christian, your life is meant to be a life of adventure. If you're not having an adventurous life, then, then we, why we call people who wear, the, who, who wear all the surf clothes but never paddle out on big days, we call them posers. If you're a Christian and you're not uh, living a life of boldness, you're sitting on the couch, you're a poser. God has something bold for you to do. That's why he gave you the virtue of prudence so you, it could guide your boldness. But if you're a Christian, God wants you to be his witness. Does he want you to be his theologian? No. He wants you to be a witness. Anybody can be a witness. I remember when someone told my dad that when he, he had first had that deep conversion experience, God wants you to be a witness. He goes, do I have to watch car accidents or something? Or what is God telling me to do? Anybody can be a witness. And so God is calling you to do that. And, you know, one of the things as men, God is calling us to wear the full armor of God. There's a really cool, Warren Carroll wrote a series of five, or I think of six volumes on the whole history of the world from basically from just before Christ all the way through today. And he talks about this one man in Spain, this great general in Spain, and I can't remember his name, but he had all kinds of, uh, uh, he wore his full armor, but he had, he had cuts and scars and wounds, but only on his front side. He didn't have any wounds on his back because he was always on the attack. And if you look at the armor of God, the armor of God is like the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, being shod with the, the gospel. It doesn't talk about anything protecting your back. God wants you to be on the move, stepping into the breach, standing your ground, taking new ground for the kingdom of God. And we have a man with us today who, who in his office, if you're watching this on our YouTube video, he has actually has a, a, a small statue of a man wearing armor. And then there's a big actual full set of armor to the other side of him. He's Father Rick Heilman, and he's the author of the book, The, the Church Militant Field Manual. Uh, it's the special forces training for the life in Christ. We've got a man's man with us today. We got Father Rick with us, coming to us from just outside Madison, Wisconsin, as Church of St. Mary of Pine Bluffs. Aloha, Father Rick. Hey, it's great to be with you, Bear. So great. I, the, I got to have that conversation with you and Doug Barry, and yeah. I thought, oh man, I love this guy. I just can't believe it took so long for us to actually meet. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know, you get on the circuit sometimes and, and, uh, you know, being a parish priest, it's it's hard for me to get out and around and meet all you guys. But it's been a great pleasure, and it was so fun being with you on that podcast. Isn't it amazing? I was talking with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers the other day, and I was thinking about him. How did he get to be where he is? He's just, you yeah. know, he was a police officer. But before I could say something, he goes, "Bear, how did you get to be where you are?" You know, and, just, yeah, right. and I have that same thought about you. How did you? This, I mean, just to look at you, and you look like a big brawny football player. It turns out that you actually were. Um, can you tell us about how you got from t to be to to this place? Uh, you know, your your early days, your your football days, and 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 then how uh, your conversion and your call to the priesthood. Let's start out there. Yeah. So uh, on my email address, I actually have the number sixty four. So that's Jerry Kramer's number. Now a lot of people have to know. The, the 1960s Green Bay Packers and Vince Lombardi to, to know who that is. But uh, I took his jersey number, and, uh, and I always wanted to be a Green Bay Packer, and I worked hard. In fact, um, I made uh, All-State 
in high school and off I went to college. Wait, wait, you, went, skipped, you skipped something. I want to talk right, about right. that. What? Making all state in college. Or high school. In high school. I mean, being all state in high school. Uh, what position did you play? Okay. What, t- talk story about that. Well, I can I can tell you one of my fun stories. I, I was a I was a guard, so was Jerry Kramer, but I was fast for my size, okay? And back then they didn't give big guys the ball. Otherwise I would have loved to have been, you know, like a yeah. fullback or something. Yeah. But one of the one of the things that I did, my very good friend was Pat Gentilly, and uh he was our running back. And and uh one one day we were about to play the public school for the first time. And they put they scheduled us on their homecoming, right? Ooh. And because we, because we were the Catholic school, an easy win, so they right. could get a nice homecoming win, right? So I was told all week leading up to that game that uh, I was going to go up against a guy who made all state in his junior year as a defensive tackle. So I'm preparing myself for that. So the first play from scrimmage, I I pancaked the guy, okay, and uh, I had him. <laughs> and after a few plays that we got, we there was a timeout or whatever, and I got off the field and I told the coach, I said, "Run, Pat, off me." And uh, it turned out that um, uh, I they, he did, and uh, Pat got 168 yards that game, and we beat the big public high school on their homecoming. And both Pat and I were uh, MVP of that game. But uh, oh, that is I, I, that. Wait, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, the offensive linemen are kind of like the sound guy. You know, when you're doing a speech, who cares yeah. about them until right. something goes wrong? Right. Yeah, Usually, yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't get the credit. I've never heard of a guard getting MVP before. Uh, it was rare. It really was. And but I think he, I think the coach appreciated that I told him, you know, how it was going in the front line and and to run Pat off me and. And so uh, he, he said that I shared in Pat's 168 yards that he had uh, that game. And, and so wow. we were yeah. I remember high school football, I, I was a fullback and uh, played a California, Texas, different, all different types of football. But I remember my dad ta- told me, grab that, grab that shirt of that guard or that tackle. Exactly. And let exactly. Them pull you right through the middle. Yeah. And, and like then when, when, when they get stopped, run right over the top of their back yeah. and keep going. Yeah. Yep. 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 It was like a freight train going the, down the field. And no Pat finesse. Was really, no finesse, right? Yeah. Just freight train. <laughs> yeah. That's and guard too. You, you know, you can pull. And so right. I was able to pull out and get ahead of Pat and we were that freight train going down the field. That's too, so, that's too fancy. Why would they make a guard pull? It, you know, that, that's so it's, it's like I remember the first time I saw that play and I go, those guys can't do that. And, you know, so thankful they could yeah. actually move somewhere yeah. somewhat laterally, too. Yeah, I think I ran a four nine forty. Holy back then. cow. So, yeah. Right. Wow. And I was at the time I was six, three, about two twenty. Wow. I ran a four nine forty. But uh, I would have loved to carry the ball. But it was, you know, they, they never thought back then of uh, giving a big guy the ball. Well, Maybe so. they saw you had only thumbs, too. Exactly. Yeah, no, Dexter. <laughs> hey, so, um, but don't you think that the football experience, for me anyway, it was a real rite of passage for me. It brought me yeah. into the brotherhood of. Well, what do you think about that? Uh, well, I always that say, to- I always say, I I've never served in the military, but I love the military and I love um, law enforcement and first responders, and and why? Because they do go out in front, and, you know. And, and they, uh, they discipline themselves and, uh, you know, and they do that, all that training uh, for a higher calling. And I just felt like my football background gave me a taste of that at, at least. Yeah. And yeah. And so I think that's where I get kind of my military themes going on because first I just love the military. Just, I just love them. I'm like a fangirl around anybody in the military. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, but uh, no. And, and so I think I got that basically from, you know, being on the gridiron. Uh, and yeah, all that. So. Me too. I mean, it was, there's that brotherhood. Yep. You know, uh, and you're going to you obey co- the coach, you, the plays, oh, you know? Yeah. Oh yep. yeah. You got to run the play just exactly. And sir, yes, sir. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I was one of those guys when I was, I was a year younger than the other guys on my team. And, uh, uh, you know, I started out school a little bit early and, but I was always the guy that was standing next to the coach saying, send me in. I just keep bugging him until they he had let me play. But I know so much, uh, so much, about playing beyond yourself yeah. there's there, you know even beyond your skill level just by 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 working hard working uh, hard and but we had the privilege i'm looking at it right now before you and i talked i'm editing episode 19 it's a uh, it's the third episode of season three of long ride home and in my heart father 
uh, when we started to film season three, the Lord said, first responders and military. And yep. I know we had a couple military guys riding with us, but I didn't know how that would happen. And early one morning when we were in Asheville, North Carolina, I, I, Jerry Cohn and I get up about five in the morning, we have really bad coffee, and I kind of write the script for the day, kind of like, what are you doing, Holy Spirit, and what do we need to be aware of, and what theme are you t giving us? And I got this, t this message on Facebook, which I never have time to read, but it somehow popped up on my phone, and they said, my husband and I love to watch, listen to your radio show, his name is Captain Stoney, he's a captain in the Asheville Police Force. So is there any chance we could, you know, say hi to you guys, stop by the hotel and go, we're having mass at the river in about an hour and a half. Do you think Captain Stoney could meet us there? And so we're down there and we're these bad bikers, you know, we, we think we're so tough and so cool. And all of a sudden we hear the roar of Harleys and it's like eight motorcycle cops coming down to the park nice, and nice. they all line up their bikes. They park them so perfect. And when they get off, they're reaching they reach to make sure their gun's holstered and they take their leg across and they all get right. off at the same time. And I'm like, oh, okay, these guys are cool. Yeah, and yeah. so, yeah, we love our first responder, our first responders and our, and our military. We're talking with Father Rick Heilman. He's the pastor of, uh, let me see, I got it, but my glasses on, St. Mary of Pine Bluff, Wisconsin, just outside Madison. And I love the book that's on your shelf. It's called The Field Manual. It's the Church Militant Field Manual, Special Forces Training to for the life in Christ. Father Rick, if people want to listen to your and Doug Berry's podcast, what is that called? That's called Grace Force, isn't uh, it? Grace Force Podcast. And they can find it on any Yeah, you can just go on YouTube and just type in uh, Grace Force Podcast and you'll find them all. Yeah, it's a yeah. it's a great show. Uh this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to encourage you to hey man, go to our go to D, go to our uh YouTube too while you're while you're subscribing to Grace Force, go to the Bear Wozniak channel. And subscribe to uh, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel on YouTube because then you get to see what Father Rick looks like. And, uh, and uh, we'll, you'll be notified every time we pre premiere a new show. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men in our audience to go to deepadventure.com and sign up for Bear's Man Cave. You, uh, it's a secret Facebook group, but please don't go to Facebook and try to join because you can't join there. You've got to go to our website, and you will find yourself in the company of real men. Uh, that means we're not perfect. We're the cave of Adullam. We're the cave where King David got, uh, uh, hid from King Saul when he was on the run. And God began to gather to King David misfits, men who owed money, men who were running from the law. And God formed those, those men into a mighty band of warriors. They became King David's valiant men. And that's what we're doing with each other. We're not perfect, but we're challenging, equipping, and mobilizing each other to move on in the, in, in the work and the will that God has for us. So, and we do Zoom video chat meetings about every two or three weeks when we feel like it, random times and dates. But go to deepadventure.com and, man, join the man cave. 
We're talking with Father Rick Heilman. He's the pastor of St. Mary of Pine Bluff. He's, he's, uh, he's one of the, he and Doug Berry have this great podcast called Grace Force, and he's written a, a really cool book. We have it available on our website at deepadventure.com, The Church Militant Field Manual, Special Forces Training for the Life in Christ. Father Rick, we, we started talking about your, how your, uh, your faith in the Lord grew, and we, started, and we just got sidetracked immediately right into football. But you, uh, as you, you were, went to a Catholic high school, it sounds like. Yep. Yeah, and then uh, I was off to college, like I said, and in the summer uh, practices, um, well, there's a quick story to that, too. There was a guy there that was a defensive end, and he was built like a Greek god, and all the pro scouts were looking at him. And I'm a freshman. He's a senior. And uh, we had what's called hamburger drills. That's what we called it. But it's just a, a, a single file line facing each other at where you, the, the guy in front of the line and they, we get down to three point st- stance and then the coach blows the whistle and you just hit each other. That's what yeah. they call it hamburger because you like a hamburger. And uh, it's just to give the coach an idea of, you know, who can move. We who used to call that the cage. Dominate. We would be in a cage like we couldn't stand yeah. up. You're like and whoever won those some when he first started the season, that was whoever won that battle. You were going to be the starter. Well, and that see, that's what happened is I went, I, I ended up being up against this guy and I beat him and my line was longer, you know, cause we kept rifling through and he got up to the front and the coach goes, Heilman, get up here. So he wanted to give this guy a chance to redeem himself. Cause a little, uh-huh. fresh right. So the coach blows the whistle. I beat him again. How did you do it? Did you come, did you come in low or how is it that you, um, I was a torpedo, you know, I, I, uh, I probably have a bad memory now because I led with my the the tip of my helmet. <laughs> that explains a lot <laughs> no, of other things too. There was a lot too. of technique that you use. You, you know, you kind of helmet to shoulder and all this yeah. stuff. But anyway, like sumo but, wrestling with a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> so a third time it happened where I was in back line. Coaches, I almost get up here, and this guy's across from me going <sighs> like know, a freight train again <laughs> like in front of the pro scouts, and so the coach blew the whistle and he broke my neck. He hit me so hard. Ooh. So, uh, and I didn't know it at the time. It was a crack. And uh, so I, I couldn't move my head for a day. And Coach finally says, I bet I think you ought to go let the doctor see that. And so the doctor had x rays, and I got a crack. And the doctor tells me that's a soft spot now. And if you get hit again the same way, you could be quadrupled. Your, your career's dead. over, in other words. So that was the end of my career right well, there. And that, I made, I made first did... string that week, by the way. I went from third string as to a first freshman. String. But as a how do you, how do you deal with that as a young man? What what yeah. what what, what did, how, was God there with you or what what happened? You know, I was raised in a in a pretty strong Catholic fa- family, and by strong, uh, we weren't great prayers all the time kind of Catholics. We were servants. Okay, so whatever the pastor needed, we did it. And, and all of my brothers and sisters to this day are going to church and are active and involved in their parishes. And I try to tell people that, that don't just punch the clock on Sunday and be done with it. You, you got you, that's your family. Okay. And we, we did, we lived at the parish. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of um, Catholicism grew, grew up in. And of course it just got crazy and silly and effeminate during that time. Mm. You know, that was uh, late seventies, you know, early eighties. And, and uh, it, it, it just, uh, I do remember though, before, all the silliness entered in. I always remember my mom in the pew and she always had her hands full with the rosary wrapped and around it. And when we went to mass, it was like you're, you're at adoration. Okay. So lots of silence. Yes. Tons of awe and wonder, you know, Amen. and then, and, and a beautiful four part harmony choir singing, you know, Ave Maria and all this stuff. Mm. And then all of a sudden, like overnight, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, you know. Oh, we yeah, whole folk mass. The folk yeah. mass. Yeah. And so it became casual. So did our kind of uh, our prayer life became casual and all that stuff. So we kind of got caught up in all that. But we still saw that as our our home, our family. We served, and, and it was all good that way. So that's all my long-winded way of saying that, by the time I was uh, at that age in high school, uh, God was there, but he wasn't a big deal in my life uh, too much. Um, but it was later 
that and and th- this is this is how I I remember it. My my godfather is a priest. He just passed away last year, mm. and uh, and so I always admired him. You know, he just d- devoted his life. He was a funny guy too, but uh, but so I I go on priest. Nah, I don't think so. No. So that was kind of like. But I, I, I had a period at, uh, it was just before my 23rd birthday, because I always tell people, you've got kids that, that are, are rough around the edges or go, getting led by the world. I said, wait till their 23rd birthday, because they, uh, that seems to be a make or break time. You know, you're, you're getting yeah, my 23rd college, birthday, I had a baby. <laughs> about a yeah, family. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so it was for me, I spent a lot of time by myself. I, we did a lot of partying like everybody else did back then, you know, we were like young people, but I, I pulled away and spent a lot of time by myself. And that's where I really fell in love with God. How uh, interesting. All over again. What do you mean you, now this is very interesting. You yeah. pull, I know for me too, when I was in high school, I really didn't party if they, you know, and I stopped getting invited to parties cause people knew I wasn't going to party, but I was focused cause I had this call to be a father. And I just was focused on that. And I would spend time. Guitar was a good friend to me. Spent a lot yeah. of time just with my guitar. What do you mean you pulled away? You During that time, was there was it just time of solitude? Or did you begin to see God? Or I think I had great models around me, people who were wise, people who were deep. And that impressed me. And I saw, I, instead of the superficial party thing, I, it yeah. just didn't appeal to me either. I mean, I yeah. invested myself in it pretty much in high in college. But I think uh, you'd be fun, but yeah, but at yeah, some point yeah, yeah. there's we, there's we something more a, there's something yeah. more than that. Yeah. So, anyways, um, all of a sudden, my 23rd birthday comes, and I, I it, it, like Paul fall, falling off the horse. Oh. I got to become a priest. I have to become a priest. You just so knew I, that. I had my, I, I, what? Wow. Yeah. So all just, of a sudden, it just was that fast. I never talked to my parents ever to anybody about it. And I literally I had my basement in the uh, my bedroom in the basement of my parish. I literally emerged from my parents' basement and said, uh, "I want to become a priest." And they're like, "Oh!" And then it was uh, I have not regretted one minute of seminary, one minute of priesthood, one minute, one second. I love being a priest, and but that's how the call came to me. It was like a shot, and it, and you and knew it, that you knew that you knew. I absolutely knew. And here's the interesting thing: I made I made this connection a couple of years ago that. My 23rd birthday, I was born on the birthday of John the Baptist, June 24th. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my 23rd birthday was June 24th, 1981. So if anybody is kind of connected with Medjugorje, that's the day she started appearing. Oh, praise God. I mean, and, and uh, I have a deep love and I, I promote the Blessed Mother and um, I I invented a rosary that you know uh so anyways uh so yeah it's been awesome but that's that's kind of how it happened to me i I had my neck broken kind of floundered for a while trying to figure things out and then and then just god kind of just grabbed me and said we're going to talk for a while you know and i had a lot of silence over i don't know what it was a month or several months i can't remember but a lot of silence a lot of contemplation and and then boom you're going to become a priest okay (laughs) That's really interesting. It was almost like um, you think of Elijah in the cave. Uh, you have a very Elijah type spirit too, by the way, like John the Baptist did. But you know, he was hiding out in that cave, and uh, then God said, "I got a job for you." Exactly. Go out and anoint a king. Praise right. God. Yes. We, we, you know, we. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know. <laughs> yeah. I can remember though, too, Father, that when I received a calling to be a father, it was just as real as could be. I was a sitting in social studies class and. Suddenly, it was this epiphany: you could bring an eternal being into existence, and from that moment, it was like the whole cosmic universe opened up to me. And from that moment, I was like everything about being, you know, studying, preparing, working three jobs to go to college, so I could be married, so I could have a, so I could provide for my kids. You know, I took it. Yeah. It was just like it was like one day I never had a thought about anything. The next day, that was it. We're talking with Father Rick Heilman. We love his book, the the Church Militant Field Manual. Let me see. The, the, the Church Militant Field Manual, Special Forces Training for the Life in Christ. And his podcast, I was fortunate enough to be with him with Doug Berry. What a blast that was, um, <laughs> that was awesome. on their Grace Force podcast, which you can find on YouTube or probably any podcast 
channel. Uh, we're going to be back with more Father Rick. We're going to talk a little bit more about the armor of God. We're going to talk about um, the, the this whole concept of special forces training as a man of God. Uh, you could go to our website, deepadventure.com. If you subscribe to our email, which if you haven't, that's crazy, you should, uh, you get a free version, a free audio book. So like me, I listen to a lot of books on audio. You get a free the free audio book of my most recent book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. So go to our website, deepadventure.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know why I have the best radio show in the history of the universe because I have guests like Father Rick Heilman with me. How can you look bad when you got uh, when you have such a great guest? Of course, he does make me look bad because he's so handsome. If you just look at it, watch on YouTube, oh, whatever. you would know. You would know. <laughs> Father Rick, um, it's so cool watch being with you in your office because I see um, the Statue of Mary behind you. I see several uh, monstrants behind you. I see crucifix. I see your book, The Field. Those are reliquaries. I got oh, reliquaries. Oh, the tall one, the tall one is a, a relic of the True Cross that was rescued on D Day and during the D Day invasion. Wow, it's very cool. Oh my God! And the yeah. other three? I uh, I got um, Maximilian Kolbe, which no is kidding. really hard to get. Yeah, it, it, they found some hairs because he was incinerated, you know, and they found some hairs, so it's super rare. My uh, friend, Father Carlos Martins, who um, he's he's like the leading expert in the world on re relics and goes around touring with relics. Uh, I told him Maximilian Kobe, he says, no, nah, friend, that's hard to get. Yeah, you can't get that. All of a sudden, my doorbell rings one day, and he's handing me off a relic. Uh, and then I've got uh, Louis de Montfort back there. No and, way. Yeah, and I got St. John Vianney back there. Well, you know, the, the thing about it is, ladies and gentlemen, who don't understand Catholics and our love for these types of relics is we believe in the resurrection of the body. That's why right. we believe that uh, uh, not o only if we die do we and, and we, we, uh, we are judged and we go to heaven, uh, but someday we'll have a resurrection, resurrected body. That's what we participate in every day when we have mass. But Father Rick, let me ask you about um, the, the armor you have just to the side, you have like a full body armor or what would you call like the knight's armor? Right. Talk to us about the armor, uh, the armor of God. Well, that, you what, know, where did you want, get those? <laughs> well, a good friend of mine, uh, he actually rents out warehouses and he's a very, very good friend of mine. And so, it, somebody just who left, left that behind. And, you know, so it was going to go in the trash or it was going to come to me, which is just amazing. Yeah. So, <clears throat> that and, and and he knows too that i uh, listen uh, uh, on my funeral card <clears throat> i want ephesians 6 10 to 12 okay be strong in the lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of god so you can stand against the tactics of the devil for we're not fighting flesh and blood here we're fighting dark forces in the supernatural realm and i i didn't read that just now <laughs> i have it memorized but wow. uh that that leads everything that I teach, the what I way I live, the way I try to um, lead the, the grace force, uh, everything. Um, that uh, and why? Because uh, it talks about the armor of God. Well, that's the state of grace. Okay, mm. and that's that's you know we've been at we've been at war with the devil, and what he's what has he tried to do first? He's tried to strip us of our armor. Okay and take away our supernatural weapons and lead us 
leave, leave us naked on the battlefield. That was his first move. And how did he do that? Wow. You know, we, we talk about the last 50 years. I, I always want to say, everybody watched my podcast, heard me say it a million times, but it bears repeating that when I was being formed in seminary in the 80s, we were not offered one minute of exposition of the Blessed Sacrament for adoration. Huh. Not once. And I, and I watched at least two, if not three guys, asked to leave the seminary because they discovered a Blessed Mother statue in their room. They were f- considered fanatical then if they had a devotion to the Blessed Mother. Really? Yeah, so th- wow. this is what the devil did. We stripped out our churches. You remember what I talked about, my family, you know, this this sense of a- uh, adoration at Mass, right? Po- yeah. Turned into this, 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 uh, this fun little, you know, whimsical thing. All, all the ways in which we were helped to open ourselves up to the supernatural power of God were taken away yes. from us. You know, there's yeah. a church that my, my sons like to, to watch uh, on Sunday morning sometimes. I f- forget what it's called, but they have a, it's just very entertaining, you know, during, during this time of the, of the, of the uh, COVID thing. It's a very inter- entertaining church. I think it's in North Carolina. And the children are all handed out iPads, and they and they have their own little church thing on their iPad, and the music sure. is fantastic, and the sure. speakers are great and very inspirational, sure. and very definitely draw you into a deeper walk with Jesus. But what's missing is the sacred. Keith Nestor, who was a, a Methodist pastor, he of the, one of the biggest churches in his city, became a Catholic convert. And he said, "I said, well, what's the biggest difference?" He said, "Well, in the in his church, it's very noisy." All right. Uh, um, he walked in the Catholic Church. It's totally quiet before Mass. Right. There's such a sacredness. Yeah. The yeah. Eucharist. It, yeah. It, you know, I, I was telling you before we started that uh, I have this beautiful church here, and it's preserved since nineteen or eighteen eighty eight. It's hardly been touched. The things they moved out, like the communion rails, I put them back in. I saw old photos and I tried to replicate them, oh. uh, but. But it looks like it did in 1888. Well, this was built by tenant farmers, okay? They didn't have two nickels to rub together, but they felt this Thank was God. altogether yes. important to do this, okay? And 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 why? Because um, opposed to the kind of the, the narrative we've heard in the last 50 years, which would say, you know, we have to be like the world and, and you know, so that people right. feel comfortable. No, when you go to mass, you should like be jettisoned out of the world and and up to the throne room of God for an hour. You should be in heaven, okay? And that's what it, and they knew that these tenant farmers in 1888 knew Praise this. God. Praise we all God. we used to know that too. We're, we're, so, gonna, yes. we're, we're learning that. We're learning that. We're relearning well, it, Father. You exactly. know what? Well, let me. Now, you know, I'm 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 not one to say well. You know, I'm just very careful. I'm very, I'm, I'm like you are. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I, I love the magisterium of the church, but I love the fact that we can have Latin mass now. But one of the things that was very striking to me when I was in Jerusalem, and I went into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and not only were we in that big church, but we were given special permission to go into that little, little, little church that I think um, um, Constantine's wife had built. I'm not sure if that's quite right, but uh, that little church that is over the tomb of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not the one the Protestants go to. This is this is the one the Catholics go to, the tomb of Jesus. 50 of us crowded in shoulder to shoulder to get into this little church. Right. And then there's a hole you can crawl into to go into the actual tomb. I'm sure you've been there. Yes, and for me to see Father Don Calloway and another priest and the deacon in there, they were facing sideways from us but they were facing the wall. They were facing a crucifix in the wall. I believe there was a crucifix there. I miss, uh, I'm not I'm not <laughs> being rebellious or suggesting any major change or anything like that, I'm just saying, I miss that feeling of the priest facing away from the- Facing uh, the, God. Uh, facing God and uh, God the Father and offering Jesus and us up. I'm not proposing anything here, but I'm just saying I just remember how sacred that was that he was right. he wasn't speaking to us he was speaking exactly. he was speaking to god the father the sacredness of the mass so contracultural yeah and i don't know if people watch my um, my masses because i have them live stream but um 
uh, I offer that way. I offer the new mass, the Novus Ordo, ad orientum, or toward the east, technically, but toward God. Because east means, you know, where where the Son of Man will rise, right, from the east. Uh-huh. Uh, but, but it's toward the tabernacle, right? Uh, but, yes. but yes, when, when I pray the prayers to God, I face God. When I pray the prayers, you know, to speak of the Lord be with you to the people, I turn and I face oh, so the and that and that's okay to do. Yep. Oh, yep. I wish I wish priests would consider doing that. That when the priest turns and faces God the Father, it's just it's like I feel that's like the jet taking off, you know, yeah, into heaven. Yeah. That connection with heaven. I, I know some priests have a rough time of, of being able to do it because the bishop, and that's just his calculation. I don't want to slam bishops at all. I think they're awesome, but uh, they calculate that it's divisive, is what they say. I and see. So, you know, I see. I see. And it can be a little bit because some people were, you know, we want, we want, we don't want to go back and pre Vatican yeah. do. And, yeah, I don't know, like. I, I like went to... through that a lot, and and I had a handful of people that left, and then all of a sudden, I had an ocean of young families that started coming in. Really, we are jam packed with. When I first came to this parish, the average age was seventy years old, and all their kids weren't going to mass. Now the average age is thirty to thirty-five years That's old. That's amazing. They're tons of kids that, because they want to go to heaven on Sunday, and they're receiving. And, and you know the thing is, I found churches that are thriving the most are the ones that are the, that are truest to the magisterium, to the catechism. I, well, I wish. I, I wish. I, I like it when a priest, when you're when you receive when you listen to the homily, isn't telling you about being nice, but actually saying, "Let's talk about." What, what he's, I mean, I just wish they. We could go a little bit deeper into the catechism, into the moral and doctrinal teaching, and not just be nice and spend time with Jesus and and be yeah. nice. I, I want to hear. I want meat. And the ch- churches that do that are growing. Exactly. Uh, our I, uh, B- Bishop Marlino, God rest his oh. soul, uh, passed away. Oh, I loved him. Loved him. Yeah. Yeah. He passed away around Thanksgiving. Your your growth last Thanksgiving. But anyways, um, he always he he always said this over and over. He was you'd say the truth. Yes. With love. Yes. With love. Yes. But the truth. And then he'd come back with, but the truth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so the truth can sometimes sting because it doesn't fit into the world's narrative and the world's agenda. And so you, the truth. you know, I, I've had people, I remember going to some parishes fresh and I would just list out some of the, the, the challenges in the culture today. And I'd hit the word abortion and I'd watch as groups of people would make these showy exits you know because yeah how dare i mention the don't, word abortion don't talk about pornography either hey we got to well, take exactly. a quick break here father rick uh this is bear wazzy with the bear Wozniak adventure we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty when we get back back with father rick heilman i love his book the church militant a field manual special forces training for the life in christ we'll be right back with more of the bear Wozniak adventure hey man I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. 
The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, Mama Bears, Mama Bears, we want you to come to our website, deepadventure.com. God really spoke clearly to us. It's kind of cool when you kind of know what the next thing in is God is ta- telling you to do. Uh, some We were talking, we were had kind of a, a, a meeting with the ministry, and one of the advisors said, well, you need to reach out to the Mama Bears. And I'm going like, you mean like Goldilocks's mom? I just could you know, I mean, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, that kind of a thing. And I didn't really relate to it. The next day, my son walks in and goes, hey, Dad, remember when we had a cabin in Montana? Remember how fierce the mama bears were? How you had to be really careful around the grizzlies and don't come step between the mama bear and her cubs? And, you know, my dad actually made that mistake once. He had a cabin up there, too. He stepped uh, into the clearing in the middle of the deep woods, and he saw a big old log, and then the log moved, and it was a mama bear. And the mama bear gets stands up on its hind legs, and she goes, and she starts snapping her jaws. And he looks off to the right, and there's two cubs. My dad, who's six foot four, got as small as he could, didn't make any eye contact, and slowly backed away. Mama bears, we need you in, to to join with us at Deep Adventure Ministries. There's a special uh, page for you there called the Mama Bears page. Join with us because we know you're the ones that want to protect the cubs. And when I say cubs, I don't mean just little babies either. I mean you have a special you have a special access to uh, the men that we're trying to reach. So go to our website. Join the Mama Bears, and we will equip you with things that you can share with them every week that you can uh, kind of nudge your men. I know it was my mother that nudged me to go to a Catholic Charismatic prayer meeting. She said, if you go, I'll buy you a pair of blue jeans, and there's a couple cute girls there. And she nudged me, and I went, and my whole life was radically changed because of my Mama Bear, uh, Marie Swasnick. She's in heaven now. So Mama Bears, go to thedeepadventure.com. You are part of our ministry. You're a huge part of it. We know your prayers are, mean so much to us. We have Father Rick Hallman with us. We're talking about uh, what it means. We've been talking about the sacredness of the Mass, but I want to ask you, Father, what is special special forces training for the life in Christ, the subtitle of your book, The Church Militant Field, uh, field Manual? Yeah, so <clears throat> I was inspired to write a book. I, I thought, I'm not going to never write I a love book. The, I love the cover, man. It's just the coolest Thanks. cover. So military <laughs> looking. Yeah, and that's what I was appealing to, too, is that, listen, the devil's eating our lunch, and I've had it, you know? So we need to rise up. We need to get strong. This is a theme I've been actually using a lot in the last few weeks. Get strong. You know, we've been weak, and the devil feels like it's his time right now. It, it, I, I think of the Battle of Lepanto, right? Yes. Where Christianity was so weakened back in 1571, and the enemy said, okay, this is our time. We're going to deal the last blow, right? That and was it. The, yeah. Yeah, and then – of course, Pope, Pope, Pope Pius V gets Don Juan of Austria. And he, what does he do? He collects the remnant armies, right? And, and compiles a force to be reckoned with. To fight against and, the, basically the Muslim incursion. Yep. And, yeah. and they were still outnumbered, but uh, Pope Pius V asked the world to pray the rosary. They put Our Lady of Guadalupe on the stern of the ship. And, uh, and, and they won because a lot of stuff happened. A lot of, uh, but the winds changed. The wind came out, suddenly out of a direction that we would least to suspect. Yep. And, yep. and so, yeah. And, and so, the Pope knew at the moment when he was saying mass, he knew at that moment that they had won, even though he was right. hundreds of miles away. That's right. Yep. And so it, it's like that. We're, 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 we're very weak right now. We, we've become worldly. Like I say, we've gone through an unfortunate period where we've uh, diminished or even become embarrassed by the uh, idea of the power of the supernatural. You mentioned charismatic. I I, I used to be involved in that uh, very much, and I they, they're doing a lot to help us to believe once again in the in the supernatural power of God. You know, uh, the the reading this morning was the 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 storm that came up. Yes. You know, yeah, and and Jesus is just asleep in the in the in the in the um, in the boat, and they wait. Hey, Lord, wait, we're gonna perish. You know, why aren't you? Gonna, and uh, that's what I feel like everybody's doing right now. Why aren't you doing anything? We're, you know, look what's going on in the world right now. And, uh, uh, and then what does he say? You have little faith, you know? Um, uh, but then what does he do? He calms the sea. 
that's what we need right now is we need to call upon Christ, but but believe. Okay, this is the key to it. Is that um, there, there's, a, there, there's a story of a, of, a, of a dad that brings his child to Jesus, and he and he kind of timidly goes to Jesus. Well, if you, you if, if maybe you might want to, he's, and he's, he says, he's, Jesus basically says, if you know, hey, it's almost like you say, brother, get your faith up here, okay? If you believe, this will happen, okay? And he says that to everybody that he Amen. heals. I can do this. And then after he heals him, he says, it's because of your faith that this is done. Amen. We need to get strong. We need to get strong. But we, but what does that mean? That doesn't mean go around beating everybody up. It means we get strong in the belief in the supernatural power of God, and we move out with that. Okay, we, we it's it, I'm going in. All right, right. In. Well, you see, you see uh, something you t- talked about earlier, Stan. When they went to Jesus in the in the Gospel of Luke, I believe it was Luke today, um, to waken him, he stood up. Exactly. In a rocky little boat, he exactly. stood. Men yep. need to stand. Stand. In, in Hawaii, the symbol for a man is a palm tree. We might blow right. in the wind a little bit, and we might feel the effects, but we stand. We don't get toppled like other trees do. Stand your ground. Step into the breach. Stand your ground. Take new ground. Father Rick, I was with um, at the Napa meeting in October right after the scandal broke a couple years ago, and Cardinal Mueller was there. Nice. And uh, that the next morning at the Mayflower Hotel, he's about to go say mass someplace, and then we're going to have a meeting. And I see him down there, and he's wearing his cardinal hat, you know, standing in the lobby of the Mayflower, this classic hotel, and he's standing with his hands to his side, like he had a Bible or, or something in his hand, maybe his missile, just standing and looking straight ahead. And, you know, he's big. He's like he, was, he would, would have been a great tackle, football tackle. <laughs> And I see him, and I go down the stairway, and I go, and I just stand next to him. Because at that moment, for nice. him just to stand like that, with everybody in that room hating him yep. uh, because of what had just happened in the church and seeing him wear the cardinal's hat, he just stood. And it's time yep. for men to stand up. And it, if you, you know, in conversation at the coffee table at work, or or at work, or, or when you're you know you're working with your you know doing contract work, contractors work, or whatever. People talk about pornography. They talk about women in the wrong way. They talk about uh, social justice issues. Stand your ground. It's time to stand up like Jesus did in that boat. Right. Yeah, and and I tell men, you know, this isn't rocket science. You don't have to be a a theologian to understand it. A seven-year-old can comprehend this, that you need to be in a state of grace. And so get to confession and get to confession often. I was telling people uh, recently that I stopped doing communal penance services, not because it was nice to have everybody get together for that and have bunch of priests and uh, all that stuff, but it conditioned people to start to go only once or twice a year. Uh, So instead I I built a confessional in the front door of my rectory. You know, I'm actually surprised they don't have any Yeah. So by, why? Because we need to be in a state of grace. We need to be in a state of Amen. grace. And, and the whole idea of receiving communion w- when you're not in a state of grace, I mean, that's a desecration of the, uh, and I, I'm a lot of priests I've talked to wonder if that's why we haven't been social distanced from our Lord because of the widespread desecration of the Holy Eucharist oh. in that way in particular. Oh. Uh, so we, we need to come to our Lord, but you go to confession so you can come to the Lord. You know, I, I, you know, I love the story of the prodigal son. He comes home, you know, and, and his dad throws his arms around him and he says, I don't even want to talk about your past, your home. And that's all that matters. That's what happens in confession. But we want to be home, right? We don't want them to be out doing our own thing, being our own God, okay, right, making right. up our own religion. And that's the other thing I tell guys, too, is that believe in divine revelations that sacred scripture and sacred tradition. Believe what the Bible and the church teaches, you know, and don't have a problem with any of it. Don't do the cafeteria Catholic thing. Don't make up your own religion, and you like some and you don't like others. you got to believe it all. So you right. believe, you believe, and you you confess and you receive, okay? That a seven-year-old can understand this. Now you're in the state of grace. Now God can take you to all kinds of places. He's an avid Bible reader and a great missionary or whatever he's got planned for you, or a priest, you know, who was a football player, you know, 
but uh, whatever. But 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 do those things. Do those things. And then lastly, keep Our Lady close to you. Mm. Jesus's mom, he loves her dearly and he'll do anything. He can't deny her anything. So she's your best defense attorney you could possibly have. Okay. I know I father. I, yeah. I, I know father for me. Uh, I think it was Doug Barry. The first time I, I heard Doug Barry say, speak about Padre Pio, the weapon. Yeah. And I go, Oh, and this is as I was returning to the Catholic church about 10 years ago. And from that point, Although there are times like I was going through a kind of a medical procedure the other day and it was very painful and I sought Mary's con consul con consoling love. I just, it was, all of a sudden it was just there. But mostly when I pray the rosary, Mary and I are going to war. We're going into battle. Exactly. And man, things happen. We're talking. He crushes the head of the serpent. Amen. We're talking. And it mocks, it mocks the devil too because, you know, he's an angel and she's not, you know. Yeah, that's what oh, I was I'm talking about in my morning up. catechism today. I said the exact same things. There's this little, this little handmaid and just crushes him uh, we, we in our long ride home this episode we're going to be dealing with tomorrow the ne next week is when we rode the tail of the dragon we're gonna be talking about that that's in nashville north carolina we're already out of time father rick father rick heilman his podcast with doug barry is grace force you can find it on youtube and all the podcast apps and his book uh, we love so much the the um church militant field manual special forces training for the life in christ where can they find you what's your do you have a website father yeah, so um, my family actually, uh, you know, I, I also. Uh, We're running got, out of time. You got to make it fast. I got the combat rosary, but That's my family, right. Roman Catholic gear. Yeah. Roman Catholic gear. I designed this after the World War One rosary. Roman Catholic gear. Gear.com, yeah. We got to run. We're already way over time. All right. Father Rick, thanks for joining us. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. That's right. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.